All those memory modules. 30 pin SIMs to be precise, but none is larger than 1 MB in total capacity. With 8 of those SIM modules, I can equip this 386 motherboard with a maximum system memory of 8 MB. Way too little to create interesting content for this channel. But why is it so difficult to come across those higher capacity memory modules in the 30 pin SIM format? After all, the 30 pin SIM specification reserves 12 address pins to address memory cells. Utilizing the RAS and CAS signal would double the address bus to 24 bits and therefore allow us to address 16 MB per module. I have mentioned the doubling of address space using RAS and CAS in a previous video, where I look a little bit deeper into how memory chips and modules work, if you're interested. So why are there so many 1 MB modules, but 4 MB modules are so rare, let alone 16 MB modules? For that to answer, we have to look back in time. 32 years ago, memory was expensive. A single 4 MB module would set you back around 170 US dollars. And you needed 4 of those to make this board post. But price was not the only reason high capacity 30 pin SIMs are so rare. In the early 90s, when high density memory chips became available, 72 pin SIMs were entering the market. Those modules were used in many 486 and the first Pentium platforms. Upgrading to a 486 or later most likely meant that you also had to change your memory to those new 72 pin modules. There were however some boards that allowed a mix of 30 and 72 pin memory modules. Between 1994 and 1995, an improved standard called Extended Data Out, or EDO for short, replaced the prominent Fast Page Mode or FPM memory. Higher capacity chips were then produced with the Extended Data Out feature. Unfortunately, EDO memory is not necessarily compatible with systems that expect FPM memory. Today, it is rather difficult to get 30 pin, 4 MB FPM modules. Depending on your location, they may not be readily available or just very expensive considering their usefulness. If only we could use the memory chips of abundant, double sided 32 MB EDO modules and make them compatible with systems requiring FPM chips. Oh wait, there is! All you need are a few PCBs, soldering skills and a spare 32 MB EDO module. But where to get the PCBs from? Well, I'm glad you asked. Without PCBWay.com, much of the projects I work on would not have been possible. Be it the Voodoo Memory Mod in two revisions or the current SIM memory modules for vintage computer systems. PCBWay has a community project space where people can share their open source projects for others to use. The PCB I'm going to show you in today's video is already available on PCBWay.com. The easiest way to get your batch is to order directly from PCBWay.com without the need to know about Gerber files or other technical details. You just need to select your quantity and pick a color. PCBWay offers other services like 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding for large quantity orders. Check out PCBWay.com and get your memory PCBs today. Links are in the video description. In a previous video, you may have seen those blue PCBs which I used to create 4 MB SIM modules. Unfortunately, with the EDO memory chips I had at hand, the 386 motherboard would not boot. It requires FPM memory. But with a little hack, I was able to make EDO memory chips behave like FPM memory chips. And suddenly, my 386 has access to 16 MB of system memory. If you're interested in a more detailed explanation of how this hack works, have a look at the video linked in the top right corner. Because I was so amazed that this hack actually worked, I decided to download the Gerber files from the author Uplate Geek, who designed the original SIM PCBs and incorporate the hack into the design. I clearly didn't anticipate what kind of task was ahead of me, but in the end I succeeded and placed an order with PCBWay. And guess what has recently arrived? The new PCBs are here. I am really excited and a bit worried because I had to reroute many traces of the original design to make space for the EDO to FPM mod. This time I ordered the PCBs in green. This is the fourth color. I have used yellow, red and blue before. So far I like all colors and this green is no exception. It looks fantastic. Today we will make another four modules to double the memory of the 386 to 32 megabytes. I already used 8 memory chips of this 32 MB module which had one faulty chip. This leaves me with 7 remaining good memory chips. That means I am short by one chip because I need 8 chips to create 4 modules. Since I can create 3 modules with those chips only, I need to find something else to fill the gap. 
When I started this project, I followed the bill of material that Uplate Geek provided in the repository on GitHub and ordered compatible memory chips. Those chips are real FPM chips and look brand new. They arrived in the mail a couple of days ago. With those 10 chips, I will create 4 pure FPM memory modules using the blue PCBs from before, but we will not see this in today's video. I will however create one more module with those FPM chips using the new green PCBs. The new PCB should support both EDO and FPM chips. I guess we will find out today if I made a mistake rerouting traces to make space for those new pads. And yes, we will run the 386 with 7 modules having EDO memory chips modded to behave like FPM chips and one module with real FPM chips. What can go wrong? First, I need to remove the remaining memory chips from the old module. When I removed the chips from the other side, I was worried that I will damage the chips. But with practice, I got more confident. Until now, I did not damage any chip with excessive heat, even though I desoldered and resoldered some of those chips multiple times. What is your take on the entire debate about shorter time but more heat versus less heat but more time? I think at the moment I'm in the camp of less heat but more time. Let me know in the comments. After cleaning the chips from remaining solder, it is time to assemble one of the new PCBs. You know the drill from the previous videos. First, I will solder the two memory chips to the PCB. This is still one of my favorite things to watch, seeing how the solder flows nicely and makes perfect connection between pins and pads. The soldering iron I'm using here is the Finercy HS01 and the soldering tip is the HS01B2, my absolute favorite soldering tip so far. Links to the soldering iron are in the video description. Once the chips are soldered to the PCB, we have to add the 100 nanofarad capacitors next to each chip. I'm slowly running out of those 1206 SMD capacitors. Fortunately, I'm not adding the parity chip. This saves me one capacitor per module. And now on to the new stuff. The mod. I decided to go with a simple SPDT switch. This is an on-on switch which shorts either the left pin with a center pin or the right pin with a center pin. The center pin is always connected to either one of the outer pins. But of course, you can also use a simple jumper to configure the module, but it should be bent 90 degrees due to space limitations. This flexibility only makes sense if you want to have the choice between EDO or FPM mode. If you're sure that you will only use FPM mode with EDO chips soldered to the PCB, then you can bridge the left and the center pads with a little solder blob. If, on the other hand, you already have FPM chips soldered to the PCB, you can create a bridge from the center to the right pad. The pads are close together, so it should be easy to create a solder bridge. I want to be flexible because I'm planning to try all kinds of possibilities in upcoming 486 content. Therefore, I decided to add a switch. Also, because I had those around and nothing else to use them for. The big silver area is the ground plane and is there to provide extra support for switches like the ones I use. I can solder the housing of this switch to this exposed pad. Now the switch is solid and won't move when pushing the lever from one side to the other. And this is it. We are done creating the first EDO to FPM capable SIM module. Before I go ahead and make the other modules, I want to test if the motherboard boots with this module and three of the blue modules I have created in the previous video. With the switch pushed to the EDO to FPM position, this module should technically be identical to the blue module. As you can see, the switch is barely higher than the memory chips. Okay, let's turn on the motherboard and see what happens. This is it, the moment of truth. Now we will see if I made a mistake or if everything works as expected. What a nice and iconic sound. That is so great. I guess I paid enough attention to the details when I incorporated the mod. So, NSSI reports 16 megabytes of memory. Let's move on to the next step. Off camera I have created the one module with a green PCB and with real FPM chips. So let's try that now. This means we will mix EDO memory configured to run as FPM with real FPM chips. The blue modules are still the modules that have the solder blob bridging the two pins. As you can see, the switch for this module is now pushed to the right, or the default mode. 
This mode should also be used when EDO chips are installed and you want to have EDO functionality. Unfortunately, I could not verify EDO operation because I do not have a motherboard that supports EDO functionality from 30 pin SIM sockets. And I actually don't know if such a motherboard even exists. But then there are 30 pin to 72 pin adapters, with which this could potentially be tested and verified. Anyway, let's try the mixed EDO and FPM modules and see if we get a successful boot. And yes, the board boots like it did before. It does not matter if you mix modules in EDO to FPM mode and real FPM modules. This PCB can deal with both types. NSSI, after complaining about the date, again reports 16 megabytes of system memory. Now for the ultimate test. 32 megabytes. I finished the remaining two modules with EDO memory chips. Now we can install three more EDO modules configured as FPM and the last module will be the real FPM module. I can't believe it. 32 megabytes. So much work that went into this project but I don't regret a single minute that I have spent to get to this point. And all started with a faulty memory module. I hope you enjoyed the journey as much as I did. And if you did, like this video to help the channel. Now one thing needs to be done before we wrap up. It is all nice to let the BIOS count the memory and boot into DOS. But is it actually error free? I am mixing different types of memory here. Different modules different traces and layouts. I guess it is time to run memtest86+. Believe me, this took almost as long as incorporating the mod into the design and solder everything together. But here are the results. Pass 1, completed without errors. Pass 2, completed without errors. And pass 3, completed without errors. That is after almost 24 hours leaving the 386 testing its memory. Now I'm really looking forward to install Windows 95 on this system. And with this we have reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the content and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.